This is ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. I want to understand where people that are against immigration or against immigration reform, I want to understand where they're coming from, but I also want them to listen to me. I want them to listen to my story and I want them to listen to everybody else. The debate over immigration turns to sanctuary cities refusing to enforce federal immigration law. Congress is working to cut off federal funding to cities offering a safe haven. But do local law enforcement have an obligation to check people's legal status? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have much more on sanctuary cities coming up. But first, our top seven stories at 7. We hold our members of law enforcement to a higher standard, so when they fall short, there are consequences. A Bradenton police officer is being fired for writing homophobic and racially insensitive posts on his personal Facebook page. Police Chief Melanie Bevan opened an internal investigation into Officer Mark Roberts in June. The nearly six-month investigation examined 11 Facebook posts and comments from the last three years. Chief Bevan says the posts violate the department's code of conduct policy, and she hopes the termination will send a message to other officers and Manatee's NAACP agrees. When you see this type of behavior, it doesn't just cut off. It's not like an on and off switch. You know, how does that relate to that, that particular officer's behavior on the street? Officer Roberts was with the Bradenton Police Department for nine years. He was officially terminated December 1st. Crisis averted after a Bradenton man sprung into action and stopped a carjacking. It happened this morning outside the banana factory on 14th Street after a waitress told Charlie Miller her car was being stolen. He ran from the restaurant into his own car and started a 20-minute chase. The out-of-work security guard says at times they were driving 70 miles per hour. Miller says he finally cornered the man on a dead-end street and waited for police to arrive. In, in hindsight, would you do it again? Oh, yeah. There, was, there wasn't even a question if I'd do it that time. What did she say to you afterwards? Well, I'm a hero to her. I'm shocked that it happened here. I'm not shocked that he jumped and stepped in like that. Not at all. The sheriff's office arrived and arrested 26-year-old Nicholas Holloway. We'll have more details tonight at 11. Home builders in Manatee County may be paying more in impact fees starting next April. On Tuesday, the Manatee County School Board will vote on whether to increase impact fees from 75 to 100 percent of the recommended amount. School Board member Charlie Kennedy says the fees could bring in an extra $2 million the district needs. With the growth the county has seen um, school enrollment wise over the past three years, we are, you know, we're just off the charts compared to the counties around us. If approved, it would move on to the Manatee County Planning Commission for a recommendation and then the commission for a final vote. Bradenton could still be offering transgender city employees coverage for gender reassignment surgery. The city council will consider the change at its December 14th meeting. If approved, coverage under the city's insurance provider would begin on January 1st. A typical gender reassignment program is a three-year process costing from seven dollars to $50,000. Now to the city of Sarasota, where the recent closing of some downtown businesses is creating concerns about what is happening on Main Street. Earlier this year, Brooks Brothers closed its stores after choosing not to renew its lease. Earlier this week, the Wing House restaurant shut down with little notice to the public. The Merchants Association says there are exceptions to the boom in the area. It's very sad. I opened this restaurant and it's like a home to me. But usually when you see a business close or whatever, there's reasons behind it. it. Doesn't mean that that's a trend and people aren't shopping downtown. The Merchants Association expects more shoppers in the area with the construction of more hotels and condos. Sarasota's County Commission is choosing Paul Carajulo as its new chairman. Carajulo represents District 2 and has served on the commission since 2014. Before that, he served on the Sarasota City Commission. The board selected Nancy Dieter to serve as vice chair. Both positions become effective on January 1st. Joe Bruders has been reelected as Sarasota's GOP chairman. 
The, uh, this will be his fifth two-year term as chair of the county party. Gruders will be busy going forward. Last month, he was elected to the state house. He also helped Donald Trump win Florida as co-chairman of his state campaign. Coming up later on our show, we'll speak one-on-one -on -one with Joe Gruders. And Bob, it is cold out there. Yeah, finally, some uh, more like seasonal temperatures across the area. We have uh, lows tonight. Into the upper 40s in some places, it looks like. And right now, it's pretty cold across the panhandle. These are the temperatures right now into the 40s already in Pensacola, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. 50s in Orlando and Sarasota, and 70s down in the Keys right now. And temperatures pretty uniform within a few degrees of uh, each other, from 57 degrees at Lake Placid and Wachula, all the way to 61 now in Venice and Englewood. Northport, you're at 59, and the same in Bradenton. Well, currently at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport, we have Generally fair skies. There are some high, thin cirrus clouds moving overhead. The dew point, pretty low, 39 degrees. That's a low for this time of year. And northeast winds are at 8. The pressure, 3029. And that continues to rise. That's soaring right now. High pressure is building in at the surface anyway. You can see that steady stream of clouds coming in from the Gulf. And that's associated with the subtropical jet stream, which continues to bring those high, thin cirrus clouds our way. And then some showers, some light rain from Miami all the way down to the Keys and all the way off of Cuba right now. Nothing going on here, uh, just uh, the chilly weather and the small craft advisory remains in effect for coastal locations uh, across much of west central Florida. And that will be the case again tomorrow morning. Now, dew point temperatures are really dropping right now, but uh, we will see lows to start the day off into the upper 40s to low 50s, which is a little bit below average. Not too bad, though, and it's nothing like the rest of the nation is feeling right now. We'll have more on the deep freeze that's taking place across the U.S. Perfect wedding, uh, weather for a morning uh, 11 wedding yeah, on Siesta the Key. beach. On Siesta Key. Dave Levy, our director, and uh, I think they're having the rehearsal dinner right now. I should be there, but I'm doing a little weather. Because you're officiating. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Bob, and good luck to Dave. Still to come, the issue of sanctuary cities is pitting mayors across the country against the president-elect now there is a call to protect illegal immigrants at a Suncoast college. The details when we return. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Sarasota, we're uncorking something special at Michael's Wine Cellar and Tasting Room. Shop in a relaxed atmosphere with our wine specialists. You'll find a thousand international wines, 200 under $20. National brand and boutique liquors at competitive pricing. Handcrafted beers. Stop by Michael's Wine Cellar and Tasting Room today and let us show you something exceptional. Batteries Plus bulbs keep stacks of batteries for cars, cell phones, watches, plus light bulbs for lamps, can lights, and appliances right on hand. Did I mention we also repair smartphones? Batteries Plus Bulbs. Trust the Plus. Visit Batteries Plus Bulbs today. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on a pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. You've seen me roll for 100 Gs. But I got a little more than dough riding on this one. They call you Lady Luck. But there is room for doubt. At times you have a very unladylike way of running out. And so the best that I can do is pray. <laughs> 
It was an issue front and center during the presidential race. Donald Trump rallied against so-called sanctuary cities, communities that refused to enforce federal immigration law. Now, Congressman Vern Buchanan is supporting legislation to financially penalize sanctuary cities. And ABC 7's Adam Cellini joins us with more. Adam. Yeah, well, Alan, some would say there are multiple sanctuary communities right in the, our part of the state. And one of our local institutions was just recently pulled into the debate. As the Trump train inches closer to the White House, some fear one of his campaign promises is equally close to fruition. We will end the sanctuary cities that have resulted in so many needless deaths. Sanctuary cities are those with policies in place protecting undocumented immigrants from federal immigration authorities. Cities that refuse to cooperate with federal authorities will not receive taxpayer dollars. Two to three hundred sanctuary cities, counties, and states are estimated to exist in the U.S. And some had a message for their new commander-in-chief just days after the election. We stand united and we will help protect all of our immigrant families in this city. To be clear about what Chicago is, it always will be a sanctuary city. In Tampa, a group of undocumented residents begged Mayor Bob Buckhorn to do the same, but he hasn't responded. Last week, Jimena Pedroza petitioned new college administration to make their campus a safe haven. We might have an influx of undocumented students that might benefit from this next year. So regardless of whether there are students that would benefit from this or not, it should still be a thing that we need to discuss. At age 12, Pedroza watched Immigration and Customs Enforcement deport her brother back to Mexico after she and her mother earned U.S. citizenship. It's one thing to read about uh, families that are separated, that are forcibly separated because of Border Patrol, because of ICE, and to be a part of those uh, numbers. It really takes a toll on not just that one person that was deported, but on the whole family. New College says they will maintain their commitment to non-discrimination and protecting students' confidential records as required by law. But local Congressman Vern Buchanan wants to add laws to make this difficult. He's pushing two anti-sanctuary city bills in Washington, one that would cut federal funding to communities where law enforcement refuses to work with immigration officers. Uh, a lot of these people, if they're here illegally, they need to go back. They need to work with federal authorities. And a lot of these cities and counties aren't, but yet they're taking taxpayer money. That may include Pinellas and Hillsborough counties, where sheriffs refuse to detain illegals with no warrant from ICE agents, considering it unreasonable search and seizure under the Fourth Amendment. I think everybody has a right, but I don't see anybody that's here illegally having any rights. Uh, they need to go back, and we have federal laws, and we're going to try to enforce those laws. Sarasota immigration attorney Anthony Olson says that may be easier said than done. Congress can only impose conditions for federal money if they reasonably relate to the purpose of those funds, which may prove tricky for immigration. There's a disconnect between the if the funding that they're using as the leverage is for infrastructure projects, it's not is not in any way related to immigration enforcement. Aside from overreach, he says forcing local law enforcement to detain immigrants on the spot could also end up hurting future investigations. If they're constantly afraid that the local police are going to just hand them over to the immigration authorities, I think that's, that creates a real problem of enforcing the criminal laws. I think it's more of a question of, of values and, and of uh, basic human rights and protection of people's dignity. So Allen New College has not publicly declared themselves a sanctuary campus, but Pedroza tells us that subsequent meetings with administration have been very positive. Adam, thank you. And when we return, should cities and campuses be enforcing federal immigration laws? We'll take it up with our roundtable when we return. An important message for Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you receiving all the benefits available to you? Do you know there is money available to lower your Medicare prescription costs? Now's the time to find the coverage that's right for you at the right price. The way to do that is to explore your options. You can spend hours doing that yourself, or you can call Health Markets and let us do the legwork for you, with no cost or obligation. We'll search a variety of plans from nationally recognized companies to find the coverage that's the best fit for you at a price that fits your budget, and we'll do it at no charge to you. Plus, you may be able to save money on prescriptions. We'll tell you if you qualify. 
Why pay a penny more than you have to for an insurance policy? Let us find you the right plan at the right price and see if you qualify to lower your prescription costs. Put our free service to work for you at no charge. Call the number on the screen now to make sure you're getting all the benefits you deserve. Don't wait. Call now. Whether you're a homeowner looking for a professional installation or a contractor looking for top quality products, Sarasota Glass & Mirror can meet your every need. For 42 years, Sarasota Glass & Mirror has been the area's premier supplier and installer of quality glass products for your home or business. As an authorized PGT Wingard dealer, we know how to protect your home. With everything from the PGT Wingard impact resistant windows and doors to shower enclosures and decorative mirrors, the Sarasota Glass & Mirror team has the knowledge to tackle any project. Selling your home? Insist on a 3D showcase tour from Gulf Shores Realty. Virtual tours are flat and boring and look more like a slideshow than a tour. A 3D tour from Gulf Shores Realty is like actually walking through the home without the drive. Get instant access to your next home from any device. Multiple views give home buyers a perspective like no other. For a limited time, mention ABC7 and Gulf Shores Realty will provide a complimentary 3D tour with your new listing. If you have a suspicion for harboring prostate cancer, we have a way of diagnosing by using an exquisite instrument called three-dimensional color flow power Doppler ultrasound. Using this system, we can identify abnormalities within the prostate that you could otherwise never detect. The Detoli Cancer Center is the only center in the southeastern United States which has this technology. If you have prostate cancer, we will find it. Welcome back. Tonight we are discussing sanctuary cities. The Center for Immigration Studies defines them as cities and counties that have policies obstructing immigration enforcement. According to the organization, more than 300 jurisdictions meet this definition across the country, including seven counties here in Florida. Congressman Vern Buchanan is supporting the Stop Dangerous Sanctuary Cities Act, a bill cutting federal funding to these communities. President-elect Donald Trump often talked about the issue on the campaign trail. And joining us for more tonight is Andrea Mogensen, a civil rights attorney for Florida's Amer American Civil Liberties Union, Jack Brill, vice chair of the Sarasota County Republican Party, and Reimer Tirado, the chief disruption officer for the online publication Sarasota Underground. Did I get your first name right? Nailed it. Oh, very good. <laughs> um, this was front and center in, in the uh, presidential campaign, uh, I believe, uh, President-elect Trump uh, kept on talking about what happened in San Francisco where there was an unfortunate situation where a young woman was, was uh, killed by uh, an illegal immigrant. And it's it, it, obviously going into the new administration, uh, the bill in Congress it would really penalize uh, cities that, that take this tack. Jack, um, make the case. Well, if you look at the Kate Steele, San Francisco, um, uh, unfortunate, you know, her death, here was a person who had been deported two or three times. He came across, back across the border, was caught, put in jail for a, uh, of an earlier crime. Then they had him for another crime, got transferred to California, and ICE was sitting there with the paperwork ready to deport him as soon as he got out of that jail term and San Francisco, the local authorities, never told him that he got out. They let him go. And that's how, he, you know, the next incident happened. This young lady lost her life. And, Andrea, this is the kind of situation that has so many people around the country furious. Sure. And I, I do see that the tendency is to focus on this person's immigration status rather than the fact that this person had committed a murder. Because, you know, the, the acts of crime are certainly not the exclusive uh, province of people who are from other origins. Certainly there are plenty of Americans committing these crimes, a very small fraction of them are affected. But what the, what the problem here is is that the federal government is trying to put the onus on local governments and the price tag for detaining individuals on local governments, local sheriffs, for what really is a federal responsibility. And that's an old story though. I, I mean I remember in the days after 9-11 uh, working in another state where there were uh, people actually of Middle Eastern uh, um, uh, descent who had uh, various IDs on them. It was very suspicious, and the local uh, police department couldn't even get federal authorities to come out and pick them up. So, if if uh, if we do not have these, if we're putting the onus on local law enforcement, shouldn't there be massive increases in in, in 
uh, grants or, or funding to local police departments to, to deal with it? I think the, the scenario s switched. The federal uh, authorities are ready and willing now. I've, I, you read stories in Chicago, obviously California, the Northeast, and it's the other way around. The federal authorities want to pick them up and nobody's telling them. Well, what their actual policy is, is that they're asking local authorities to detain individuals for 48 hours without probable cause while they make a determination whether they want to come and get them. So that's not actually accurate. What they're doing is they're costing us money locally and not reimbursing the sheriffs who are housing these people, and they may or may not come and get them. Right, I mean, let me get you in here. How many people are we talking about, at least on the local level around here? As far as illegal Im immigrants? It, that, it, right. In, in our community, if you could give it some kind of context to the people who are watching it. I, ha I haven't the slightest idea. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know the, the numbers on the top of my head of, of what's here in this county. I'm not... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not versed in those statistics. What are people telling you when they hear about the bill in Congress and what President-elect wants to do? I think more than anything, uh, people are just starting to see that this is a larger rift between an overreaching federal government and cities, states, and counties trying to just figure out, can we run and manage our own cities? Are we capable of managing this and making these decisions? And uh, we're going to get into some really interesting territory when we start setting precedents of you know, which laws can be uh, enforced and who picks which laws. Because if you go in immigration here and you don't start enforcing what is federal law, then what happens when somebody else picks another issue and has the precedent for All right. taking right. their there own? There is much more to discuss. But first, we have to take a quick break and have a check of our weather when we return. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? They found me a place for what she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe and they just helped every step of the way and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service and you can trust them to help you. Call right now to get your free Senior Care Compass eBook. Find out about the five best kept secrets on financing senior care and assisted living. Call now 800-290-0352. 800-290-0352. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. On horrendously cold nights, on days when the rain has been relentless, or when the sun is beating down, there is an animal trapped with no protection, fighting to stay alive. Time is running out for them, but you can help save them by joining the ASPCA today. With your donation of just $18 a month, You'll help rescue abused and neglected animals, provide them with food, shelter, and medical care. When you go online or call in the next 10 minutes, we'll send you this free membership kit and our limited edition 150th anniversary t-shirt. It's just 60 cents a day to pull animals out of a terrible life. Don't let them suffer another day. Please help now. Our discussion of sanctuary cities continues in just a moment, but right now let's get a check on our forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks. I'll tell you, we had some clouds around this afternoon and this evening, just some high, thin cirrus clouds moving overhead. No rain around. The showers are well down to our south now, and it appears they'll stay there, too, as high pressure continues to work its way in from the north. You can see that light to moderate rainfall occurring near the Florida Straits and near the Keys and along the southeast coast of Florida. But for us, 
We're staying high and dry here. I mentioned uh, some light rainfall off of Marco Island. The red tide report has come in from the FWC, and it's still showing high concentrations to medium concentrations into the area waters near Sarasota and Manatee counties. It is sporadic up here in the northern portion of Sarasota Bay uh, near Longboat Pass, also near the north end of Anna Maria Island, but more concentrated right there near New Pass and Big Pass. There are some concentrations there in the low category, but the high uh, con uh, concentrations right there. Uh, near New Pass and near Longboat Pass. So it's still around, and there are still some harmful impacts being felt up and down the coast. The wind speeds uh, will be uh, kind of gusty throughout the night and tomorrow. Small craft advisories remain in effect uh, right through Saturday mid morning, and then those winds uh, should start to subside. The best boating day this weekend will be Sunday when temperatures start to warm back up and the seas start to calm down a little bit. As far as current conditions go, it's 58 degrees and the humidity at 49% with the northeast wind. At 8 miles an hour, it's pretty cold out there for Florida standards anyway. Much of the rest of the nation is under a deep freeze for that matter. 63 was a high well below the average of 74. 86, the record set in 1978. And this morning's low was uh, below average, but not too far from it. Uh, three one hundredths of an inch of rainfall at the Sarasota Bradian Airport this morning with a few passing showers. That brings our monthly total now to 1.21 inches of rain. Temperatures already dropping down into the 40s in Jacksonville, into the 50s here. And we'll see 58 degrees now in Mayaca City and in Bradenton, 59 in Cortez, 60 in Inglewood, and 58 degrees in Punta Gorda. The forecast looks pretty good tomorrow uh, by the afternoon in the low 70s to mid 70s, so fairly close to seasonal averages by, say, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It will start off rather cool, though. And with the high pressure dominating much of the weather from Oklahoma through Arkansas all the way over to Georgia this evening, that high pressure ridge will dominate our weather over the next several days. So once these clouds move out of here by tomorrow, it looks like uh, Sunday we'll start to see uh, some sunshine mixed with warmer temperatures as those winds switch more to a southeasterly direction. We'll be back into the upper 70s to near 80 degrees as quickly as Sunday afternoon. So a quick turnaround. Temperatures I mentioned cold in Detroit. Green Bay and Chicago all in the 20s there and single digits and below zero readings in North Dakota and Billings, Montana now at four. It's 44 in Albuquerque and Dallas now checks in at 37 degrees. Even Atlanta below freezing at this hour at 28. Winds out of the northeast I mentioned at 20 knots subsiding somewhat in the afternoon. Seas will be three to five feet. Choppy conditions out there. The water temperature at 70 and the UV index will be an eight for area beaches tomorrow. And the forecast tides upcoming. The next high tide will be at 820. A low tide at 410, sunset at 537. The extended forecast, there it is. Warmer weather returns quickly as early as Sunday. Alan and the roundtable discussion will come right back after this. Stick around. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them. And she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. The official salon of ABC7. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope. 
and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing sanctuary cities and whether or not they should see, receive federal funding. Our guests tonight are civil rights attorney Andrea Mogensen, vice chair of the Sarasota GOP, Jack Brill, and the creator of the online publication Sarasota Underground, Rymar Torado. Uh, welcome again. Uh, Andrea, the ACLU is very involved in this issue. What are you doing right now? Well, one of the things we're doing locally is that we're going to be gathering and letting people know what their rights actually are. Uh, we'll be meeting uh, lo- locally here in Sarasota, and if you'd like to attend, you can. we have a Facebook page where people can join and watch for the items of interest, including uh, our gatherings, our educational meetings. Um, but the ACLU's primary concern is always the Constitution, and when we talk about this issue, we need to break down you know, the different governmental actions and put it up and see if they pass constitutional muster. Well, some you know about, some you don't. You don't know what the incoming administration is going to do. You do know about the bill that Congressman Buchanan is, is uh, supporting in Congress. What do you think of that? Well, I think that any, any governmental action, well, first of all, from a policy point of view, pitting the federal government against uh, local governments and agencies and taking away their autonomy may create some friction that they're not looking for, and that's not a constitutional question, it's just an observation. But, but other than that, they just have to be careful that they do not run afoul of the Constitution. Um, if there are going to be funds attached as a penalty for any non-compliance, as was stated in your preamble, those funds have to be rationally related to whatever the alleged infraction is. But they're also going to have to be able to define whatever is going to be punished as something that passes constitutional muster. Jack, the the immigration issue aside, cities that receive federal funds are are funding police officers and their salaries who protect the public against a whole host of crimes. So uh, is that the right way to go about it? That's a tough question, um, and that's a tough issue. And the question, you know, the balance (laughs) of trying to take care of this issue or manage this issue versus affecting other public services and our own safety, that's a very much of a gray area and it's going to be one that's obviously going to be discussed in the next several months. Um, but I think also some of the cities need to take responsibility. When the mayor of Chicago says, we will be a sanctuary city forever, you know, well, that's not the right way to take care of your citizens well, either. So you, there's you, a balance. And you can't, you can't pay for that, right? And so that's why they're leaning on the federal money. And so the biggest problem is, is, is not necessarily that it's happening, it's that how it's, how it's being addressed and how it's being handled. Um, and it, it, we're seeing a, a, a huge disconnect, if you will, in the, whole, in the entire political process. And the Constitution protects the rights of American citizens. Um, and so we can't pick and choose you know, where we apply, this is the Constitution, we must stick to it, and then over here, let's run away from it and let's uh, bash it and beat it up. And so the federal government has been sticking its nose into city and state politics for, uh, you know, as long as it's been around. And And here's one of the problems, too, is that the federal government is trying to force local sheriffs specifically, because they are the people who are expected to detain these folks, to detain them at their own cost, and if they don't do so, they they intend to pull other but, funds. So but, not only they're not paying you also have, for the responsibility, have, you also have federal situations in Arizona where you have them cutting funding to to well, to, to sheriffs who are right. actually trying to enforce immigration laws on the border. And, and so you just have and a political Jack, game. I, I, I did want to follow up on something that Reimar uh, uh, talked about: the old battle between state rights and federal rights. Uh, a lot of the folks in your parties, uh, your party, chafe when the federal government. Uh, Absolutely. So. Why is this different? Well, this is, a, this is a common security issue for everybody. And by the way, to, to note, Sheriff Knight, for the longest time, uh, if they found somebody that was not properly documented here in Sarasota, 
they sent them down to the ice, you know, uh, facilities in Miami, and we took care of our issue and sort of let them deal, deal with it. But it's the, you know, it's, we're, we're, we've got to protect the rights of our legal citizens. And to have folks here that are undocumented, illegally here, that creates a two-level, you know, uh, society, which shouldn't be, and it's not fair to the rights of the people. But, but you can't have it both way, and then use that as as cheap labor in a lot of instances too, right? So you can't be okay with bashing it on one side and then supporting it on the other side with with industry. And and and, and I don't know that that specifically happened here, right? We're not diving into a, a specific situation that that we know about in the local community, but it's, it's a real of, issue of, that of undocumented yeah, workers. You, you use working. the labor; it's cheap labor, and 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 it's. And it's supported in a ton of industries, actually, and here locally in, in, in a lot of the agriculture. And, and, so you, and I'll tell you what, I would rather take the people that are on the SNAP program that are, you know, but they receiving won't do federal it. benefits. They don't want That's it. They right. Don't if they want to continue getting their benefits, then they should. we should be able to put them to work. I, I, listen, I would do that in a second. You won't get an argument from me on that. There is one other issue that I, I want to get to, and that is what's happening at New College and other schools around the country in terms of the students asking the administration to make the college itself a uh, sanctuary campus. Uh, and we knew, do know uh, that there are dreamers and others who uh, go to these schools. Uh, you have your ear to the community. What, what are younger uh, folks saying about that? Uh, you know, they're, they're saying a lot, but they're not doing a lot, right? So it's, it's, it's really easy to be loud and to, to, to take a platform of we're going to stand for this, but when it comes time to get involved and when it gets the time to, to actually get your feet on the ground and go get your hands dirty and actually knock on some doors or make some phone calls or get involved in some of the advocacy groups locally, nothing happens. And so they're desperate. Those groups are desperate looking for people on the streets that actually want to get involved and actually make a difference. Jack, there was a day, um, you know, our, our schools and campuses were very active in, in terms of young people pushing on issues like the mm -hmm. Vietnam War, and, and you, you see a growing number of schools and young, young people doing this. Uh, so you may have a situation where the communities are being, uh, having money taken away by the federal government, but the college campus is a different deal. Depends on if they're a public or private, you know, depending on uh, you know, how their funding sources are. Um, I think you know, colleges have always been a generation of folks to you know, speak out, you know, try um, different views, and then that's great. That's part of freedom of speech. But at the same time, you've got to follow, you know, the laws, whether local or federal. And you, and I'm sure, you know, you mentioned the new college, I'm sure under Dr. Dr. O'Shea, he's got a great administration, they've got a good student government. I'm sure they'll work something out that will, you know, be beneficial for everybody and will help the, help the cause. Andrew, have any schools been doing this uh, in, ma in terms of making an official policy, do you know? Well, when you say it official policy, some schools are doing something, some schools are declining to do things, but what is, what is it, it that they're doing? Because, for example, what the students would like to do or what they desire to do is all First Amendment protected. They can desire all sorts of things. The way the schools respond to it, if they're creating you know, safe spaces where other students can't express dissent, that might have First Amendment implications uh, that are negative for the school. Um, if they're taking a position where they're going to refuse to to enforce a particular law, that might be different. Or if they're going to allow the existing privacy responsibilities that they have, uh, because they do have some discretion in them, to not release private student information and they're within their rights to do it, that's fine too. There's, it's not a simple, you know, is this okay or is this not okay? It's what specifically are, are they being asked to do? What decisions are they making and what are they going to do? Um, and st each one, each piece of that has to stand up to constitutional muster. You know, I, this there are a lot, so many issues involving the immigration issue. One of them also is DACA, the the Dreamers. Uh, I, you know, noticed a interchange the other night on CNN between a, a Dreamer who is going to school and uh, former Senator Rick Santorum, uh, and she is saying uh, basically, look, I've been an American most of my life. I didn't, I didn't come here voluntarily. I was brought here. And, and should I be shipped out of the country? And Senator Santorum was, was saying, in fact, yes. He did. Um, I, it's going to be a messy couple of years if this is the road that we go down. It's going to be. And the Dreamers are, um, are a totally much tougher scenario. I mean, if you're brought over and you're two, three years old, you've grown up, you've had the advantage of a great education system, health care, you know, and you are contributing back to society. Um, that is a much tougher situation. All right, we have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll get final thoughts from our guests, plus what some of our viewers are saying about a sad reversal of fortune for the Florida manatee. 
the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. They took that stress and that tension when I was particularly feeling very bad <laughs> after that nasty car accident. And it was such a relief to know that I didn't have to bear that burden alone, that I had help. Our goal is to not just get a, a satisfactory settlement on their case. We want them up on their feet, happy again. They've gotten their life back. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them, and she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. Don't miss the 19th Annual Thunder by the Bay Motorcycle Festival, January 5th through the 8th, to benefit Suncoast Charities for Children. This year's festival welcomes special guest Blue Oyster Cult to the premier sports campus at Lakewood Ranch on January 8th at 4 p.m. Admission is free. Festival events include a sporting clay tournament, kickoff party, welcome thunder event, cruise for cash, charity motorcycle ride, and a two-day rockin' and ridin' at the ranch festival featuring vendors, live music, a taste of thunder area, and more. VIP tickets are available. For tickets and info, visit thunderbythebay.org. Welcome back. Donald Trump will take the oath of office in five weeks. Will he make good on this promise to cut off federal funding to cities, counties, and states that protect illegal immigrants? Our guests join us for final thoughts. Rahmer, what do you expect from the new administration? Uh, I expect him to keep posturing like he is and to keep taking a really strong stance on immigration where I think he has an opportunity to uh, push for real immigration reform here and actually find some real solutions and instead I think we're we're pushing ourselves towards a stronger divide here where we're taking really hard line positions um, this country was was founded on on hard work and, and opportunities and we should find a way to give people those same opportunities uh, and, and I think all of that in, involves some comprehensive reform Jack I, I believe Republicans and Democrats both believe that the answer is comprehensive immigration reform it did not get done in the eight years of Obama, will it get done in the four or eight years of Trump? I'm not sure. It'll be, it'll be interesting. There's a fresh start. You know, with, we have the House and the Senate and the President. Um, so hopefully something will get done. But at the same time, when you look at uh, Congressman Buchanan's bill, you know, you have to go back. We are a nation of immigrants. My grandfather came through Ellis Island. You know, he, he learned to speak English because he, you know, I remember he spoke German in the house and he spoke English because we were in America and that was our language. So, well, let me just ask you because the, the knock on Obama was when he came into office, he had the Senate, the House, and the White House, and he didn't do it. You have the Senate, the, the, the House, and the White House now. What's stopping the Trump administration? Stay tuned after five weeks. <laughs> Andrea? Well, I think we've got to be very careful here because. There's been a lot of discussion about immigration, and as was just noted, this is a nation that was founded on uh, immigration. Um, we've got to be very careful because it's become such a hot issue and people feel really strongly about it. Let's not forfeit our individual rights in the name of trying to solve this problem. If we're going to detain people, we still need probable cause that they committed a crime. We still need to preserve our constitutional rights because if we start finding reasons not to uphold the Constitution, uh, pretty soon we will not have one, and then we will not be any different than the other nations that we desire to separate. It also from. can't go without saying that you can't solve, uh, you, you can't just solve the problems by uh, taking the refugees of, 
of all the other countries and just being the place where everybody runs for sanctuary because those people are running from oppressive governments and lawless nations and if we create a lawless nation where are we going to run we we could go on for hours on this but we have to leave it there but before we go we want to share with you what some of you are saying about a story that we reported last night the florida manatee has made a huge comeback from the endangered species list in the, tw in the past 25 years the population has increased from 500 percent to more than 6,000 but with more of them in the water, more of them are being killed by boaters. A new record, nearly 100 this year alone. And here is what some of you are saying. Patrick McCarthy writes, more manatees mean more interactions with boats, but let's not demonize the idiot boaters. Paul Forrester writes, the hundreds of idiots that race their boats in the shallow Sarasota Bay are a danger to many manatees and dolphins that live in the bay. The, that photo is courtesy of the Sarasota Dolphin Research Program. And Desiree Frain writes, yeah, thanks to be, being taken off the endangered list, that was a real smart. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI. Want to watch past roundtable discussions? They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thank you to our guests for being here tonight. Andrea Mogensen is a civil rights attorney. Jack Brill is vice chair of the Sarasota Republican Party. And Raimar Torado is the chief disruption officer for the online publication Sarasota Underground. And you can get the latest content from Raimar Torado on Sarasota, uh, sarasotaunderground.com. When we return, Joe Gruders is writing quite the white rave joining the state house helping win trump for florida and uh, he is the co-chair and now he's getting a fifth term as sarasota's republican party our one-on-one -on -one interview with him is coming up Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. Alex Karras Lincoln's holiday sales event is here. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sports Utility for $269 per month or a 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We are proud to introduce the newest addition to the Lincoln lineup, the all-new 2017 Lincoln Continental. We have a great selection and ready for immediate delivery. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury. Winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We're located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US 41. Welcome back, everyone, and joining us is the once and future chairman of the Sarasota Republican Party, Joe Gruders. Congratulations. Alan, thanks so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Ten years? Yeah, can you believe it? You know, almost 25% almost of my life I've been chairman. A after this election, finally winning a seat in the Florida House, with everything that's going on, why sign up for another term as chairman? Well, because I don't think our job is done yet. You know, these next two years are going to be critical for the state of Florida. We have a governor's race in 2018. We have three cabinet races. These races are critical to the future of our success. We want to continue to see Florida go red, and I think it's important that uh, we finish a job that we started. What do you have to do immediately? 
Well, I think the first thing we have to do is, you know, when you're done with the campaign, just like our counterparts, we have to go back and raise a lot of money. So we're we're making calls now, we're making visits, we probably have to raise a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We have the city races coming up. So we really have no type of break. But the good thing is is our party is locked and loaded. We always have contributors ready. We have our four offices that are open still. So we're ready to go. Let me ask you this question, because you're also a CPA, you have to make a living, you're now a state rep, but there is also a, a lot of speculation, which you're not denying, that uh, you're possibly up for a job in the Trump administration. So with that being out there, why was it necessary to, to run for chairman again? Well, because here's the deal. I, I am giving up my vice chairmanship of the Republican Party of Florida. I resigned my position as a Florida State Board of Trustee member. And what I thought is I didn't want to give up everything. You know, I love being chairman. I love help, helping good candidates get elected at the state, you know, local and federal level. And I just want to continue the, on the, the job that I've been doing. And I may go to D.C., maybe, maybe not. If I go to D.C., obviously, I'll have to reevaluate everything I'm doing here. But until then, I can't just uh, shut my doors down and, and think that uh, anything's going to change. i got to move on, move forward, and continue operating as a, everything is uh, normal. Just a few seconds left, but where does that stand right now? Uh, I would say that I have uh, made my intention known. If I get called, I'll, I'll, you know, if they ask me to serve in some capacity. Any particular uh, area? Uh, it, it, uh, it, there is, uh, I am aiming high, I think that, uh, uh, that, but at the end of the day, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, there's, there's a lot of positions. I'm focused on a couple. If I get picked, it'd be great. If not, I'm happy to serve in the legislature representing our area. Okay, congratulations again, Thank Joe, you. and we'll be back in just a moment with Primetime Headlines. This is a special health alert for seniors suffering with joint pain. If you have Medicare insurance, you may qualify for high quality support braces at little or no cost. I'm thrilled with my knee braces. Now, there is a simple and proven solution for seniors to get out of pain with state-of-the-art support braces. I barely feel any pain at all. Braces for your knees and back, as well as your shoulders and ankles too. I'm so happy with the quality of these braces. Call now and you could qualify for a pain relieving brace at little or no cost. I can play ball again and it doesn't hurt. And because of my Medicare coverage, it costs me next to nothing. So call now. And because I have this red, white, and blue Medicare card, my braces have cost me just about nothing. It's true. You may get a knee, back, shoulder, and ankle brace at little or no cost. They qualified me for two knee braces and a back brace. If you have knee or back pain, give them a call. They can help. 1-800-476-8967. 1-800-476-8967. Christmas Traditions by Lux Art Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by Lux Art Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. On horrendously cold nights, on days when the rain has been relentless, or when the sun is beating down, there is an animal trapped with no protection, fighting to stay alive. Time is running out for them, but you can help save them by joining the ASPCA today. With your donation of just $18 a month, You'll help rescue abused and neglected animals, provide them with food, shelter, and medical care. When you go online or call in the next 10 minutes, we'll send you this free membership kit and our limited edition 150th anniversary t-shirt. It's just 60 cents a day to pull animals out of a terrible life. Don't let them suffer another day. Please help now. Now for a look at your primetime headlines. President-elect Donald Trump continues his thank you tour across battleground states as President Obama is ordering a review into whether Russian hacking interfered with the election. ABC's Lana Zak is following the latest developments. President-elect Donald Trump's thank you tour continues with visits to Michigan and Louisiana. The Senate seat there still up for grabs in a runoff election. Tomorrow we need you to go to the polls and send John Kennedy 
to the United States Senate, and that's why I'm down here. Mr. Trump renewing a campaign pledge to build a wall on the southern border with Mexico. We're going to build the wall. Well, if John's not there, maybe we can't build the wall. So now I know you're going to come back. But before the president-elect left Trump Tower, he met with the man who may be his most powerful legislative ally, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. We had a great meeting to talk about our transition. We're very excited about getting to work and hitting the ground running in 2017 to put this country back on track. Meanwhile, at the White House, the current president has requested a review of hacks related to the last election. The president earlier this week instructed the intelligence community to conduct a full review of the pattern of malicious cyber activity related to our presidential election cycle. The president asked uh, to go back with what we know now to make sure that we're using every tool possible um, as a means of due diligence. During the last election, hackers released emails particularly targeting the Clinton campaign. Intelligence officials tied those hacks to Russian operatives, a fact Mr. Trump has disputed. The White House believes that this report will be completed before President Obama leaves office. And they also say this is a wider ranging report than just the last election, reminding us that in 2008, both McCain and Obama were hacked by Chinese operatives. Lana Zak, ABC News, Washington. A new sign of easing relations between the U.S. and Cuba. Starting next week, direct flights will begin from Tampa to Havana. On Monday, Southwest Airlines will make its first flight from Tampa International to Cuba's capital city. One-way fares start at $59. However, a two-week advance is still required to purchase tickets. One-way tickets? Governor Rick Scott is declaring a victory over the Zika virus, lifting the final active transmission zone in the state. Contracting Zika from mosquitoes is no longer a threat in Miami's South Beach. After a 45-day streak without locally transmitted infections, health officials credit the cooler weather, along with aggressive mosquito control measures. Despite the progress, Florida Surgeon General warns the threat of Zika continues. We will continue to see travelers bringing Zika infections into our state, and so we must remain on alert and continue all of the protective efforts that we've been doing that have led to the success. As of Thursday, Florida's Department of Health reports more than 1,200 cases of Zika in the state. Nearly 250 were locally acquired by mosquitoes. In just five years, Florida's re-employment taxes have dropped 94 percent, and the rates are staying low. State businesses were paying more than $120 per worker in 2011. Now that tax is only $7. The money goes towards a trust fund, which helps find work for the unemployed, while the fund was in dire straits during the Great Recession, it has now more than $3 billion in reserve. Good news for businesses. People are finding jobs when they're looking for work. Um, if they lose their job through no fault of their own, uh, they're getting back to work quicker. And so we have a strong economy, um, and because of that, we're able to pass along the savings. But don't expect those taxes to go down any further than $7 per employee is the lowest rate allowed by law. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.